What's up designers and welcome back to Remton Games. I've made eight videos so far about uh, Pokemon design, one for each of the current generations, and I thought I'd try my own hand at this. So I reached out on Reddit, on the Pokemon subreddit, and I asked for suggestions of Pokemon that I should try redesigning. Most of these are from those Reddit suggestions, and there's also a few that I threw in based on my own ideas. So keep in mind that I'm not the greatest artist in the world, so I did make all this art myself, I did the best I could, but it's not, you know, it's not professional quality. That being said, I do think the designs and the concepts behind them are interesting, even if the art isn't the greatest. <laughs> so uh, there's five Pokemon that I've redesigned and let's just get started. So the first one here is actually this is supposed to be a generation 7 design for Charizard and let me just kind of walk through my thought process here. We want to capture the core features of Charizard which is that he's a fire lizard dragon type thing. The thing is, in Generation 1, Charizard was kind of a generic dragon, right? He's kind of the, the basic idea of just a fire-breathing creature. By 7th generation, you know, Pokemon wouldn't do that kind of design. They're, they've already done their generic dragons. They have Dragonite, they have Salamence, you know, they're kind of past that at this point. So how do we bring that concept into the seventh generation. So what I decided on was a Komodo dragon. So why Komodo dragon? The Komodo dragon is native to, I believe, Indonesia? It's a group of islands. It, it kind of fits the vibe, right? Like the Komodo dragon still fits in that island environment. I was also looking for a way to get some of the design features that we expect from a Charizard. Otherwise it would just, it would not resemble it at all. Uh, so for example, bringing in a creature called a Komodo dragon kind of gives us an excuse to get these dragony wings as opposed to some other kind of lizard where it just wouldn't necessarily make sense. In Generation 7, they have a really big theme of mixing animal features with like humanoid features, right? You look at all the starters, you know, uh, Incineroars, like a fire cat mixed with like a wrestler. It's a very common thing. So I wanted to, to add that kind of Gen 7 spice to it. I wanted to mix the Komodo dragon design with some kind of a Hawaiian flavored, uh, like a job or a role. A Komodo dragon's an apex predator, right? So I decided to mix it with the Hawaiian Koa warriors, which were kind of the elite warriors of uh, traditional Hawaii. So that's where we get this kind of headdress uh, here on its head. It's where a lot of the colors come from, uh, the yellow and red. And then these markings kind of mimic some of the traditional tattoos that would have been worn uh, by these warriors. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this design. And that is my Gen 7 Charizard. So since I was redesigning a, an, an older Gen 1 starter as a more recent generation, I decided to kind of do the opposite. So this one's not based on a Reddit suggestion. This is kind of my own idea. I decided to take Chestnut, a uh, Gen 6 starter, uh, and redesign him as if he were in Generation 1. So we have a lot of Generation 1 kind of traits here, right? So let's just start with like, what is the overall concept of Chestnut, right? He's a hedgehog and he's based on a chestnut, right? So those actually go together really well. Like if you've ever seen a chestnut like in its shell, it kind of has a green spiky shell that actually works really well for a hedgehog. And I don't think it actually came through very well in the original design. So I've kind of brought it more back to basics, right? So the overall concept here is we have a hedgehog and instead of just spines on its back, we've got kind of grassy spikes like a chestnut shell. What makes this a generation one design? We have a more subdued color palette. I tried to bring in some of those classic features like the eyes, right? We've got those angry triangle eyes that all of the final evolution starters had in gen one. 
Uh, we've got the Triangle Ears, classic, Gen 1 traits. Uh, and the, you know, claws and the claws on the feet. Um, that's a very common style in this early generation. Uh, the overall body shape was kind of inspired by some of the chonkier Gen 1 Pokemon. Uh, your Nido Kings, your Rhydons, your Kangaskhans, things like that. Um, these shoulder plates... Uh, were, were kind of a common design detail in Gen 1. I also wanted to tie it a little bit back to the original Chestnut design, which had more of an armored look to it. Um, and of course, this uh, the stomach bringing a lighter color with these stripes. Um, that's something that you see on like a Marowak or like a Dragonite. You'll see this kind of a design. Overall, um, I think it really does harken back to an early generation design. So that's my Gen 1 Chestnut. So the next one I redesigned, and this one was also based on a Reddit suggestion, was Ice Q. So in that comment, they mentioned that they like the concept for Ice Q, they just don't think that the execution was very well done. Now, personally, the concept of ice cube I, I have a hard time kind of wrapping my brain around it obviously it's a penguin with an ice cube on its head and then the ice cube breaks but like other than the fact that penguins live in cold places like why would i don't understand the idea behind that so i want i didn't want to stray too far from the original idea but as you can see instead of uh an ice cube just freezing in a perfect cube around the penguin's head I made it a, uh, a snowball um, and I kind of made the overall design more reminiscent of a snowman. Why? Camouflage. So the idea is that they kind of roll their heads into this snowball and they have the snowball design on their stomach and everything to like blend in better uh, to hide from predators and whatnot. You can still have the same you know, ability in battle, you know, when you get hit, the snowball breaks. So yeah, I have these, you know, pattern on the stomach, kind of looking like buttons. Um, you know, I added a, a face and the beak, you know, poking out through the, the snowball kind of looks like the, you know, the carrot nose. So this one, honestly, you know, this one didn't change all that much. Um, but I, I'm, I'm happy with the, the change. I think it makes more sense as kind of a, a cohesive design. Um, and then for the non-snowball form, you know, of course, I had to keep the changes to the, you know, to the belly design and everything. I also changed the head. Um, I wanted to kind of keep the same vibe of the original Ice Cube. Um, so I, I wanted to keep it in the same color scheme, but... Uh, yeah, so this is my updated Ice Q design. So, next up is Jinx. So, Jinx uh, was another Reddit suggestion. Somebody said uh, I should redesign Jinx for the challenge. Well, challenge accepted, my friend. Jinx is one of those early Pokemon that, I mean, I want to say it didn't age well, but I don't know if its design ever really was... Uh, went over very well and Jinx is another one of those Pokemon where it's not entirely clear what it's even supposed to be necessarily um, but there's a lot of theories about Jinx and the one that I thought made the most sense was that it was modeled after an opera singer so there, there's definitely a, a musical element to the original Jinx especially with the um, ice typing like, there's nothing in the Jinx's design that really says ice, but it would kind of make sense with the traditional opera image of the singer as like a Viking, right? Vikings typically are in the, the north, very cold areas, so that would kind of make sense with the ice typing. So I really just leaned into that more. Um, I made it clearer, uh, you know, what it's supposed to be. Like, this is very obviously an opera singer, but the thing is, I didn't actually change all that much. Like, the pose and everything is very similar to the original design. Uh, the main changes I made were to the color. So I changed the colors of the, you know, the dress, 
to, to more resemble a traditional uh, Valkyrie costume. And of course, the skin color. So uh, one of the most controversial things about the original Jinx design is that it is colored pure black, which uh, with some of the other design elements led it to be considered as possibly a racist caricature. Once again, nobody's entirely sure what the original design intent was of the original Jinx. You know, if that was intended as a caricature. That being said, it's a Pokemon. Uh, it can be any color. It definitely does not need to at all resemble any kind of a racial stereotype. So I chose blue to more tie into the ice typing. Um, it's, it's a very neutral color. I think it looks good with the overall design. You know, I think it uh, kind of accents well with the, uh, the gold and white. Um, as this is a generation one design, I did want to keep the color scheme relatively simple. Um, I, I, for the most part, kept the eyes, um, and the face is a very Generation 1 face. Um, so yeah, that is my, uh, opera singer Jinx. And this last design was also, this was not a Reddit suggestion. This was actually, uh, my own concept, and this is actually Heatmore. So I really wanted to redesign Heatmore because in my opinion, it's definitely one of the worst Pokemon designs out there. I know, it's, I'm sure there are Heatmore fans out there, but in my opinion, uh, it's very forgettable. Like it's one of those Pokemon that I always forget it even exists. It's got these weird like fleshy tube things coming out of it that I've always found very off-putting. I think the overall color scheme and everything for it is just not, it's just not appealing. It's not a, attractive design at all. I, I, I don't think it's got many fans. If I mean, if you're a Heatmore fan, please let me know. I'm not trying to insult you. Personally, not a fan. So, uh, this is a big shift. This is a big change. Uh, one, I actually, I really like anteaters. I think they're charming. I think they're cute. I think they're fun animals. So, I wanted to capture more of the, the charm of an actual anteater in this design for one thing, but I wanted to keep the original core concept of Heatmore as well. Heatmore is a predator to Durant, right? And Durant is a steel type, so Heatmore evolved to like breathe fire so that it could melt and consume the Durant. So um, I kind of made the nose, like, yes, this is a very anteater nose, but it's also meant to kind of resemble like a flamethrower. Um, and of course the furnace belly, right? Um, it's kind of inspired by like molten glass or molten metal. Like clearly there's a, there's a lot of heat, you know, going on inside of this, this Pokemon. Um, and it's kind of, you know, spreading out um, and then it can, you know, breathe out that fire through its, uh, its little nose. You know, because Heatmore is such a forgettable design, I wanted to make this a lot more distinctive. I wanted to make it uh, stand out. Um, I think it's it's got some cuteness to it. Like I said, anteaters, I, I find them to be very cute and charming animals. Um, but I also think it's it's kind of got a cool factor as well. Um, so this is a Pokemon that I could personally see, you know, using on my own team, whereas the current Heatmore design, I would never. So yeah, those are my Pokemon redesigns. I would love to hear your thoughts about them in the comments down below. How do you think I did? Do you like these redesigns? Do you think that you could have done better? Uh, I would also love to hear ideas for what Pokemon you think I should redesign in the future. I would love to make another sequel video to, for this based off of your comments on this video. So please let me know what Pokemon I should uh, give a redesign to next. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. Make sure you leave those comments. And uh, if you want to see more, if you want to see a sequel, make sure to subscribe for this channel so you don't miss that when I post it in the future. And uh, until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.